Hi, welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. I want to do one more thing to my central vacuum that I think is going to really help out. Because right now I'm using two different hoses, the four inch hose, and I'm using a two and a quarter inch hose off of my regular shop vac. Well, I want to be able to have a quick disconnect to be able to swap those different hoses out depending on what I'm doing. So what I've done is made with the rare earth magnets a quick disconnect that will go onto my blast gates. And this is going to work really, really well. Let me show you how I did it today, so let's get started. The first thing I want to do today is do a little test. So all I'm going to do is carve this one little pocket. It's a circle that's 0.32 inches wide and it's 0 0.07 inches deep. Now if this works, this will accept the rare earth magnet. Now I went ahead and grabbed just a scrap piece of the MDF and I clamped it down. And the size really doesn't matter because all I'm going to do is just carve right here in this area. And I'm going to play with this and this area here until I get the size and the depth correct for the rare earth magnet. Now it's not even really important to bring this all the way down to this bottom corner. So what it's going to do, I'm just going to set the XY axis right here, which is actually one inch up. Because what it's going to do is move over an inch and up an inch and put the hole right there. So let's go ahead and give it a try. That absolutely fits perfect. Okay, last night I was thinking about my central vacuum and I'm actually using two different hoses. I'm using the two and a quarter inch hose off the vacuum off my regular shop vac and I'm also using a four inch hose from the actual central vacuum and I want to be able to switch those and there's really no easy way to do that because in the beginning all I'm doing is just taping that four inch hose to the blast gate and I'm done. The other alternative I was thinking was just to be able to put in the PVC pipe into the hose, tape that, and then shove that into the blast gate. The problem with that was it was falling out. So last night I came up with the idea of using the rare earth magnets on the blast gate and the hose to make it, in essence a quick release and I want to see if that works. The first thing I want to be able to do is determine if the hose is going to be too heavy for the rare earth magnet and it's just going to fall off. And the second thing, how about the air leakage around that joint? Basically you're having two pieces of the MDF come together with the rare earth magnets, how much air is going to escape around that. So let's go ahead and find out how this works. The first design that I created was the hexagon. And after thinking about it, I didn't like these big sharp angles. I thought that would be a little bit difficult to manage. And I also didn't think that really these six magnets would necessarily hold. So then I went ahead and changed. I'm going to go over here to a different workpiece. So I went ahead and went with the eight sided for an octagon shape and I think this is going to work better. The only bad thing about it is I need 16 magnets. I've only got 14 but we're going to do this experiment anyway. I'm not going to let a little factor like that of not having enough magnets stop the progression of this. So this diameter here is the same diameter as the PVC pipe and then I went ahead and just threw in the approximate size holes. So what I need to do now after my experiment is change these holes to the correct size. So what I need to be able to do is get these holes out of the way. So I'm going to highlight this section and I'm going to highlight my circle by holding the shift key down and now I have both of them captured. From here I'm just going to go ahead and delete 
these which are incorrect. This was just my little test item. So now I'm going to put in the correct size hole. So by being able to come up here, select on the circle, and what I need here is a circle, and we're going to lock this, that's 0.32 inches in diameter, and then I'm going to need a cut depth of 0 0.07. Now that I have my pocket created, I want to go over here and highlight that, bring up the apps, and drop down to the array. And with this, I need to go ahead and do the shape count, which is going to be 8. The radius of this is going to be about 2.5. We're going to start with that as an experiment because I didn't measure ahead of time. And if you look at this, this is really not exactly centered. So I need to be able to set this where this is completely vertical. And by clicking on the middle, on that vertical anchor, anchor that will take care of that. So I'm going to go ahead and import that in. And while I have this highlighted, I'm going to center it to the material. Now, this little small one, I want to go ahead and move it out of the way. Because I don't need it now. The next thing that I want to do while I'm here, I'm going to highlight all of this and point this down to 0 0.07 of an inches for my depth. Next, I'm going to take my circle and bring it to the center of material. Same thing with my outer octagon. We're going to bring that back to the center of the material. And this is now looking really good. I want to go ahead and cut this out and see how it works. Now, we're going to do this on a half inch MDF. So that's 0.52 of an inch. I am using the tabs on both of these so that it's not going to slide around. I'm not going to use the glue and tape method. The next thing that I'm going to do, I need to have two of these to make this quick disconnect work. So I'm going to change the size of my material and I'm going to duplicate this. So on my y-axis I'm just going to make this 16 inches and then I'm going to highlight this entire section and duplicate it. So I'm going to hit Control C, Control V, and now I have two. And then I will slide that right up on top of it. Let me zoom out just a little. Now everything else around this is just scrap, so it really doesn't matter. I can actually put it closer. And that's going to be fine. I'm not going to worry too much about it because I got plenty of material. So let's go ahead and cut this. Now the other thing that I want to show you is how I made the octagon. It's actually very, very easy to be able to do. And then all you need is just go to the apps, scroll down, and select a polygon generator. In this case, I wanted eight sides. And then you select the radius. And I'm going to select four and a half inches. And that gives me my octagon or any shape that I want. And then you just import it in. So this is a very, very useful app. So by combining the array to be able to put in the pockets for the rare earth magnets and then utilizing the um, polygon generator, being able to make whatever shape that I want, I can create a very useful part in just a matter of a few minutes. Well, it's time to carve these parts. And one thing I want you to notice is if you will look at the bit, I am not using the absolute bottom left-hand corner to be able to have my XY home position for this workpiece. You can literally place it anywhere that you want. And in my case, I wanted to have it up about an inch from the bottom. So that's where I placed it. And then I just went ahead and let the machine do the carving. You know, it's something about being able to create a part on the computer and turn it into reality in just a few minutes. It's something that I just never get tired of. And I think it's just absolutely amazing, the technology that we have available to us today. So the first one is completed and the machine just goes ahead and moves up to the second one. And in a matter of just a few minutes, it's all done. 
Now I want to move on to one more step that I wanted to be able to cover. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut out one more, but this time I want to be able to have a smaller inner ring. This ring is going to go away. And what I want to be able to do, this will be for my hoses, for my uh, vacuum cleaner, that will be able to slip right into this opening. So I'm going to go ahead and carve that now. And then we're going to glue in the rear earth magnets and give this a try. Now I still had room on this piece of scrap wood to be able to make this last one. But this time I'm just going ahead and using this point as my XY0 uh, position. I actually moved it over off of my original Y axis and there's room there. That's what I like being able to use my XY home position on my workpiece anywhere that I want to be able to put it. By having both sizes, one for the four inch hose and one for my two and a quarter inch hose, it will allow me to do the experiments that I want to to make sure that this is going to work. And I'm glad that I was able to use the last of my scraps. Okay, there we go. We've got all of them. Now one of the things I wanted to point out, the reason that I moved this over, because I did not want that bit hitting my uh, bump stop. So again, you can move your XY home position anywhere that you want to place it on your uh, workpiece. So let's go ahead and get this off, clean them up, and test it out. If there's ever a reason to understand why I use an auxiliary waste board, this is it. Because you can see all of the cuts into the, the uh, masonite. It would ruin the waste board very, very quickly. This way, I can just take this off when I get finished with it, throw it away, and put a new piece down. And that has been able to protect my waste board for the last three years that I've had this machine. Now the first test with this is to make sure that this size hole is going to fit my hose. That is going to work perfect. Okay. So this is something that I can literally hang in the shop when it's not in use and be able to switch back and forth. So first step, we got 100% there. That's going to work. Now I got to get it off. There we go. All right, let's check the next part. Okay, this is the way I currently have it, where the adapter is just fixed to the blast gate and it's taped on. Now that does create an airtight seal, but also makes it where I can't change and adapt and put different hoses on it. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off and put the new one on, and we're going to test it out. One of the things that I find interesting is that the vacuum is strong enough to literally hold the hose in place without even having the magnets on. That's a good suction that I really like. Now for the second test, I just temporarily clamped it in place. And you also saw that the suction of the uh, vacuum itself held the hose in place. This way with my temporary uh, clamps on it, there is absolutely no air that is leaking out of this. So I think this is going to work really, really good. Now for the next one, I'm going to go ahead and put the magnets in. Now I'm just taking the PVC ring and I'm going to slip this right on it and I'm going to bring it right up to a point where it's even. Now again, this is just a prototype. If this works the way I think it's going to work, I'm going to make these adapters out of PVC. So I'm just going to lightly use some hot glue and secure it in place right now. And with that done, I'm going to go ahead and put the magnets in. And again, as far as these magnets, this is going to be temporary again. Because if this is successful, I'm going to be using the super glue to be able to hold these in place. Okay. 
And this is something that I'll actually be able to tear apart fairly easy. Okay. Now, if you recall, I was too short, so I'm just going to leave those out for my little experiment. But that seemed to be holding pretty well. All right, so let's go give this a try. I'm going to temporarily put this on also with the hot glue. Okay, with this done now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, temporarily attach this in with the hot glue as well. And then we'll give this a final test. Okay, I've got the hose in place now. We'll go ahead and turn the unit on. And we'll just slip that in place. There we go. It is done. Okay, that actually is working really well. And just put it right up there in place. Locks in, and it's done. When I'm ready to pull it off, I can just pull it down and it comes loose. So with the test done, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and make this out of the PVC now and actually glue the magnets in permanently with the uh, CA glue. Okay, I've been using these hoses now with the quick disconnect for about an hour or so in the shop in different configurations and stuff. And overall it's doing well. But I really don't think that the magnets are strong enough. So I'm going to be looking for some stronger rare earth magnets. As far as the seepage of the air, it's virtually nothing. Now, I don't have any fancy equipment to actually see it. But putting my hands up there, I really do not feel any of the lost air. So I think that was really good. So going forward until I get the larger rare earth magnets, I'm just going to use a little spring clamps to hold it in place because I really like being able to change from one hose to another for the different applications. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.